Hey everyone, we are at the AMD suite now at CES 2017, looking at some of the motherboards for the Ryzen CPUs that are forthcoming. Right now we're looking at Gigabyte. We already talked about the MSI motherboards and have a video on that if you're curious for more. But I'm going to be walking through some of these, some of the PCI configurations on each of these boards and get a better idea of the lane avail availability and things like that. Before getting to that, this coverage is brought to you by CyberPower and their Cyber XL Gaming PC. We'll have a link in the description below if you're curious and want to learn more about their invertible motherboard layout. Let's start with this one. This is the Gaming K5. This is an X370 board. As many of you likely know at this point, the AMD chipsets for Ryzen are comprised of X370 at sort of the high end, and then you go down to B350, more mid-range, and A320 at the bottom end, which is probably going to be the least popular among our type of audience. Uh, there's sort of a side chipset called X300, and this one is, it's a little bit different. We might talk about it more later, but that's targeted more specifically for mini ITX motherboards. So if you were an FX user or wanted to be an FX user and couldn't find a mini ITX motherboard, this is supposed to solve that problem where uh, the X300 chipset is basically the size of a pinky nail. It's very small and all of the I.O. is transacted through the CPU using the CPU lanes rather than relying on any chipset lanes. With that said, the first board, the Gaming K5, I don't have the official specs with me, but it looks to be something like a seven or eight phase layout. It might be a six plus one or something like that. We'll talk to Gigabyte more about this. Uh, the memory and the PCIe slots have what most boards seem to be doing now, which is the sort of metal plate reinforcement. And that doesn't have, uh, for, there's different reasons to use it on the memory versus on the PCIe. On memory, normally it's for something like additional ground points. On PCIe, it's for additional strength for people who rip it out of the socket or something. Um, but getting to the board, the X370 chipset will have a chart. We can put it on the screen with some of the base I.O. that you can expect out of each chipset. Uh, that covers USB 3, SATA Express, things like that. And before getting kind of cynical about SATA Express, there's actually a reason to have it. You can peel off those lanes and use them for something else, just because SATA Express is driven on PCIe and that bus. So for uh, the rest of the board, pretty straightforward. It's got a by 16, a by 8, and a by 4 slots. So these three PCIe slots, even though they're full length, uh, they are wired electrically for 16, 8, and 4. And then if you look really closely above the first PCIe slot, there's a set of four chips, which we also showed on the back of the X-Power Titanium from MSI. Those can mux the signal uh, for additional video cards. Now let's move on to the next board. This is the Gigabyte X370 Gaming 5, so no K on this one. It's basically just got the white Aorus badging instead of the black Aorus badging, and it is otherwise functionally uh, mostly the same thing. I suppose there's a difference actually if we look closely at the at the choke. So this might actually be a 10 total phase board. Uh, so it's got a bit a bit more going on there, but we'll have to talk then. There's also a killer Ethernet chip on there. The rest of it uh, is going to be L <laughs> LED and RGB differentiated as we saw with the Gigabyte board we reviewed recently. Uh, though this does have some of that as well because it's the Aorus branding. As far as the heatsink and cooler support, this is something probably important to note. Even though it's a different socket, there's more pins in AM4. It's something like 1331 pins off the top of my head, whereas AM3 Plus was 900 something. So the socket's physically larger, and that does mean that there are some changes to coolers, but there's supposed to be support for that. So the cooling manufacturers are in communication with AMD about this. They're supposed to be making at least adapters or mounting brackets for future CPUs, if not current ones. That mostly covers that. Uh, moving on to this board, this is a micro ATX board. It's not mini ITX, so we don't have the X300 chipset that I mentioned. It is on the A320 chipset, uh, which is the lowest end SKU. Very basic board, uh, not really worth talking about a whole lot of it other than there's just PCIe X16 wired for X16 it looks like, and two DIMM slots. Uh, the last board is another, uh, it's a B350 board. This is the Gaming 3 from Gigabyte, and uh, it's more simple. It looks like it's got something like seven total phases uh, for the VRM. Uh, maybe something like that, and then none of the LEDs. It's going to be your more mid-range board, probably in the 100-ish, 100 100, 130 range, somewhere in there, just kind of speculating. But that covers it. So that's the basics. If you, have, if you are curious about the previous boards we looked at, the MSI ones, the link in the description below or in the post roll video will have one of those. And uh, as far as information, CPU socket should be mostly compatible going forward. The big important thing to note is that this will launch before March 31st. I've been given that information directly. Uh, I don't know 
how long before, but that's what we have for a window. So thank you for watching as always. Patreon link in the post video to help us out directly. Links in the description below for more information. I'll see you all next time.